I think to place this into context, uh, there's great concern out there, appropriately so, uh, of allowing patients who've been diagnosed with muscle invasive bladder cancer to not have some form of definitive therapy to their bladder. And that means it's either radiation or surgery. And the reason for that is the concern is that even if you look inside the bladder and you see no tumor, for example, after chemotherapy or after resection, you may be missing occult disease. And in fact, this was just recently published uh, from our group at Fox Chase Cancer Center that the predictive value, negative predictive value of a cystoscopy prior to surgery is very poor. You miss about half of cancers that way. So it's just not good enough. And so we said, okay, how can we improve upon that if we want to preserve bladders? And, and what we thought would make sense, and other groups are doing similar things, is to look at certain mutations that we know predispose patients to have a really good response to chemotherapy. And those happen to be DNA damage response genes. And there are many of them. The four that we use were RB1, FINK, ERCC2, and ATM. And that's because they came from two previous trials demonstrating that people who have those mutations do really well long-term. And so then we combine the two. We combine the genomic data, the mutations, with the clinical data cystoscopies and imaging to put that together and, and create this sort of risk adapted allocation. If your risk is very low, meaning you have a mutation and you have no cancer, your risk is low, you are then offered a active surveillance approach. Everybody else, everybody else is directed towards some form of bladder directed therapy, be it surgery or radiation or occasionally intravesical therapy. And that's what we mean by risk-adapted approach.